Welcome to our amazing readers. Thank y'all for being patient with us. <laughs> Hello. All right. So I'm going to get us started and just do kind of a little introduction. And then um, our authors are going to introduce themselves and tell a little bit about their books uh, just very quickly. And then we can't wait to have some questions from you guys. So welcome to the finale event for this year's Lamb Summer Reading Challenge and what a summer it has been. I have absolutely loved every chat with our featured authors. The first two authors of the roundtable events were an absolute blast. The only thing that I wish that were different was that would, we would have had 40 more minutes. <laughs> the 40 minute limit was like, oh man. <laughs> also the reader participation in our events has been fantastic. So thank you, thank you to all of the readers who have taken the time to join in the fun. My goal for this has always been to bring readers and authors together. So seeing that happen more and more often, um, the more years I do this, that is just amazing and wonderful. So. Before our authors reintroduce themselves to you guys and tell you a little bit about their books, um, I want to go ahead now and introduce our, or not introduce, but announce <laughs> our weekly winner for this final week. So as you guys know, weekly winners are chosen based on points earned for commenting on Facebook posts and attending or watching uh, replays of the week's featured author chat. So this yeah. week's winner got, gets their choice of one of my books you get your choice of any good thing this good thing or our good thing i mean not our good thing sorry um every good thing see even i get them mixed up <laughs> and as i predicted haha i called it we had a tie so this week mother and daughter came in neck and neck i knew it was going to happen one of these days which meant that i went to the fancy schmancy wheel of names to determine this week's winner and this week's winner is Nancy. <laughs> Congratulations. And let me know which book you'd like. You can tell me tonight or you can just tell me later and think about it. Um, whichever way. <laughs> so now I'm going to um, ask each of our authors who are with us tonight to just tell a little bit about themselves and their books um, so that we all know what they write and that kind of stuff. And I am going to start. Uh, we have one person here I'm going to let in. And then we're going to start. I'm going to start with Alina. Um, if you would introduce yourself and tell a little bit about your books, and then we'll kind of go around from there. Oh, sure. My name is Alina Rubin. I live in Illinois near Chicago. I started writing recently. I've been working in IT for 20 something years. And then during the pandemic, one morning, I just got this feeling I'm supposed to be writing a book and these characters started coming to, you know, into my head. And I was inspired by a show I watched, uh, you know, <laughs> a couple nights before that, which was about the uh, British ships and war. And somehow I imagined that there's going to be a young woman who is going to be the doctor on this ship and she's going to treat the wounded sa sailors. And that's how my... <laughs> character came about. Uh, she didn't go on the ship at once. I started with her story, how she learned medicine. I found out that at the time, women could not be doctors, so she disguised herself as a man to study medicine. And that's how I came up with my first book, A Girl with a Knife. And that one book has won the Illinois soon-to-be-famous author contest. It kind of <laughs> got me into absolute love of writing, and now I feel like that's what I want to do forever and ever. So I wrote that later the sequel, a girl with um, a no job for a woman. So this is where she starts her career on the ship. Uh, and I plan to write more about that in future books. And I now also have a prequel. This book, uh, I uh, had it for a couple months now as an ebook, And then just two, two days ago, I, I received my copies as a paperback. So it's called Hearts by the Sea. And this is a story of her and one young boy meeting uh, before she ever thought to become a doctor. So that's my books, and uh, I'm so happy to see everybody. I'm so happy to see Terry. She won the Girl with a Knife copy. So it's on your, it's on the way to, today. I finally told my husband, you have to send this book. <laughs> you know, I have a person waiting for it. <laughs> so it's, it's on the way to you. 
Awesome. I love it. And I love hearing the stories of how this all comes to be and then seeing the authors and readers come together. It's just uh, makes me so happy. So next, I'm going to have Rachel, if you would tell us a little bit about yourself and your books. Hi, everybody. Uh, well, I am Rachel Ritchie. I'm actually originally from Washington State, and that's the information you'll see on the, about the author in my books right now. But we recently moved to the state of Florida. So now I've gone from cold winters to uh, hot summers. <laughs> this is a little different. Uh, we, we're so happy we made the move, though. We were loving it down here in the South. And uh, I started writing in 2014. Um, it came out of a place where a little bit like the pandemic, there was a lot of stress for a lot of people. You know, I was um, a foster mom at the time, and it was really a difficult difficult time just emotionally getting through all of that. And so uh, one day when I was praying, this story of a, a princess who's uh, loved by her father, the king, um, she's just completely ugly. Um, all of her beauty has been stolen from her and she's just awful. And that's kind of how I was feeling on the inside was just I wasn't connected anymore to the people around me. And so the story really helped me kind of get back on track with knowing that everything was going to be okay and that um, I didn't have to be like led into that ugliness. So there's a lot of my personal story inside of it with it all being in a fantasy world and you can't see that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's where my writing journey really started. And then from there, you know, the books just kept coming, the stories kept coming. So uh, these are the three that I've written in that series so far. And then I'm working on other books currently. So The Beauty Thief is the first book. And then Captive Hope is the second. It follows one of the characters from the first one. And then The Treasonous uh, continues with that story. But uh, there should be another one eventually. I just have to get on it. I've also got a short story in a uh, anthology that I published with uh, 15 other authors. It's called the Crux Anthology. Joy's in that one. That's how we met, was through the Crux Anthologies contest that I ran. And um, I also have a beautiful um, storybook edition of The Beauty Thief. So it's a simplified story of The Beauty Thief uh, that you can read with beautiful illustrations by a friend of mine back in Idaho. Um, that is just, uh, it's mostly, it's just beautiful pictures. And then the story really simple. <laughs> for enjoying the, the pictures. With. <laughs> so that's, that's that what is, I've got. That is awesome. And I love how, you know, oftentimes writers really journal, well, not really journal, but there's a lot of therapy in writing. And I think yeah. that that's a beautiful thing. And I think some absolutely amazing stories come out of sometimes dark times for writers. Yeah. So it's pretty special. So Thank Candace, you. Candace, you are next. Hi, I'm in coastal Alabama in Mobile, and that's how I got to meet Joy. She came into the bookstore where I work part-time at, and we immediately hit it off. Um, I'm the author of four books, one YA and three picture books. And I started writing about um, 2010. I was a brand new mom, and I was like, if I'm going to ever sit down and write the book that I've been wanting to write for all my life, I'm going to do it now. I'm also dealing with a newborn. So I like to um, do everything at once, I think, feel like. Um, and actually, that kind of worked um, um, tangibly because when my um, two books did come out, um, I actually had two books debut in the same year and the same month and just a week apart of Tuesdays. So um, that was a lot of fun to go from never being published to all of a sudden having two books out. Um, and with the debut, since there's so much emphasis put on it, it was interesting to see how the picture book world and the young adult world does things differently, but also uniquely. Um, so it was it was it was a whirlwind. <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Remember that, and I remember thinking, "Wow, I cannot believe she's handling two releases at the same time." And you did it with such grace. I was like, "Wow!" Well, oh. oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, Annie, you are next. Well, hello, everyone. It's nice to meet um, 
Rachel and Candace, who I haven't met before. Um, I am in Missouri in the southwest corner, deep in the Ozarks. Um, although I do have experience, um, you're talking about being by Mobile. I went to graduate school in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Um, so I like the South too. Um, but yeah, I wrote a novel. It was the Missouri winner for the Indie Author Project. Oh, I blurred my background because it's really messy back there. Um, <laughs> so this is a three letter name. It is a, it's also YA. Um, and it was influenced by some experiences I had um, growing up. I went to a school, an elementary school that was integrated with deaf and hard of hearing children with hearing kids, um, got introduced to deaf culture, some sign language, and um, have a friend who is um, partially deaf in one ear that she wears a hearing aid and just kind of got inspired by her. That's actually where the name of the main character came from. It's her nickname. And um, also I lived in China for three years. And so there were some cultural aspects that I also added to the world. Um, a three letter name is a, I call it a survival romance where it's at a time where people live on this island where there's no technology, but there are beasts that roam the forest at night and can come out and hunt the people. So when the main character becomes hard of hearing and is told she can only provide to the community by making babies, basically, she chooses to get married over being banished to the ocean and um, discovers that the guy she's marrying has his own disability and she'd never seen him before. And so together they're learning how to be who they are with new disabilities while also trying to still protect all the people on the island. And I love every time I hear you tell some of the background and why you wrote things the way you did. I just love that. I love hearing the behind the scenes or behind the stories <laughs> that authors have. So. Oh, yeah. Well, and I forgot to mention, I do have something. Hopefully it'll come out in September. I'm starting a new job soon. So that kind of helped me up with a bunch of training. Here's my mock up of the book cover. Oh, you can't see it on there. It's um, I teach theater. And so that being my background, I was talking to people about how I use theater techniques in my writing. So I'm writing a short book because I've also done some speaking engagements and have a few more coming up in September. So I want to get out in September. <laughs> um, but it's just called From Stage to Page. And it's all about how you can use theater techniques, like how does an actor build a character? And how can you use those techniques in building a character for um, literary purposes? I definitely want that. I feel like you've got you've got an audience here. All of these yeah. writers are like, yes, we want our hands on that. <laughs> it's going to be short and to the point and not too wordy. I love some craft books, but some of them I'm like, they're too long. There's too much in there. So it's a lot of here's an idea. Stop and think about it. Here's an idea. It, because I teach, I kind of modeled it out how I also teach my lessons. So that's awesome. Well, I am Joy Rankatory and I write Southern fiction with Christian roots. I also write nonfiction for authors and fantasy. Um, as Rachel said, that's how I first got my name on a book cover was through her contest. So my fantasy short story, A. Liberelle Awakened, won second place in her um, sci-fi fantasy adventure short story contest. I don't know if I'm remembering that right. <laughs> anyway, the Crux Anthology. Um, that is a, that was such a fabulous entrance into being published. Um, and then from there, I have three, um, books. This is my first one. And this is the one that won the Louisiana Indie Author Project Award. This is Any Good Thing. And then I also have This Good Thing and Every Good Thing. And One Good Thing will complete the collection and it will be out in the spring. Uh, and then I also have, you can see kind of back behind me, the blue. Uh, covers back there. I should have gotten all my books out in front of me, but anyway, you can see back there. It's Finders Keepers, a practical approach to find and keep your writing critique partner. And I got to write that with my writing critique partner, Mae Smith. So um, I started writing, uh, my background is in journalism, so I've written for a long time, but I always dreamed of being an author. And finally, in it was 2015, 2016 was really when I started. Um, just plowing ahead toward that dream. So, and then we had two other authors. I wanted to mention them because um, both of them are ill and were not able to attend tonight. So they were so sad to miss and I'm sad that they're missing. Um, but that is J.S. Farmer who wrote, you know, let me pull their books up here. Hopefully this doesn't all go falling down behind me. Here we go. 
So Blue Sky Gone, the Florida um, Indie Author Project Award winner. And then J.A. Curtis, Lies of the Haven. So um, we've got literary fiction set around 9-11. And then we've got fantasy with fairy warriors. So all sorts of fun stories that we've gotten to enjoy this summer. So now I would love to turn it over really to the readers. Um, I am hoping that you guys have brought some questions with you tonight and you are welcome to unmute yourselves and ask them or you can type them into the chat and I'll read them out. Either way is totally fine. So have at it. <laughs> and the writers can ask questions too. So if you guys have questions, feel free to. And I actually had a couple of questions in case. I'm looking at those right now. I um, have a question um, from the authors. Um, I know that Joy puts a whole lot of work into planning all this stuff that's been going on as well as her other things and, and book events and things like that. Um, do you guys have regular office hours or do you kind of fly by the seat of your pants and just fit everything in where it works? That's a good question. I'll jump in and answer that. Cause I'm always that teacher. Cause like somebody has to answer first. Um, well, because my job is changing, I'm going from working part-time at a library where I had just been adjuncting at a local community college. I did that for a couple of years, but in the pandemic, people weren't taking theater classes. So I stepped away, worked at a library for a bit. Now I'm going back as a full-time teacher at the same college. Um, that is affecting me severely. <laughs> I had been part-time and I'll have two kids. So I would say anybody who is a mom, um, or who cares for children and writes, you kind of have to grab the time whenever you can. I do have some times that are like in the, on like a Saturday afternoon that I can pack up my laptop and go to the library and I can tell my husband, you're not going to see me for three hours, just feed the kids. <laughs> and I just go. So that's kind of built into the schedule. But I know for me personally, um, I'm a grab the time when you can get it kind of a writer. And um, that also being, I, I like to give myself grace when I know that life demands are more important. Um, and that like, if my kids need me, um, <laughs> Tuesday, my son has three doctor's appointments in one day because we live an hour from where all the doctors are. So we're just knocking one, two, three out before school starts. Um, and so, you know, there's all these little things that's like, okay, well, that's a day I just know I'm probably not going to write. And I had to learn to let myself be okay with that because I used to compare myself to people who are like, well, I write four hours every day, no matter what. And I was like, I'm not that person. So for me personally, oh, I just take my time and I write whenever I can. <laughs> Yeah, I think definitely being um, adaptable has helped me tremendously. I um, used to do the, you know, this is my set time to write. I am going to be selfish with it and keep it for myself. Um, but sometimes that was harder to do um, than others. And then I just felt so guilty. Then it was hard to write. So now that my kids are older, they can do more for themselves. So it's not as much of a deal. But Luckily, the bookstore is closed on Wednesdays, so I try to keep Wednesdays as my writing day. I'll have a um, critique group like every other uh, Wednesday, and then occasionally we'll have doctor's appointments in the afternoon, like when school gets out. Um, but I try to keep those Wednesdays reserved just for myself. And that's, but I haven't written anything in a while. Well, I say that, but I actually did finish a short story and submitted it for a contest. So... I don't have time right now for novel work, but I am still writing poetry and short stories. That's all my brain can handle right now. <laughs> I write every day early in the morning. So like I get up at 5.30 and I try to get one or two hours of writing before anybody in my family is up. Uh, then I do my work usually from home. And... Uh, in the evenings, I often on Zoom calls, kind of like this one with other authors, or I had to work on my newsletter or my blog. I usually have like five, six, seven things uh, I need to get done over the week uh, that, that have to do with my writing, but not writing itself. 
definitely not consistent times for me. I'm, I'm definitely like Annie and that it's when I can grab it, I'll, I'll do it. Um, lately, the last year, um, I have, we, we moved. So that was really difficult to get back into the, the schedule of writing. And then I've had uh, a lot of client projects to do. So I've been focusing more of my creative energy on other people's projects over my own. So I haven't done a whole lot of writing in this last year, but I have done a lot of creative work as far as cover design and book formatting. So that's where I'm at right now. And Rachel is my cover designer and formatter, and she is amazing and makes my life so much better. (laughs) So yes, I love too that all of us are actually writer moms. So we all have kids. um, And that's definitely, you know, I don't have a set time I literally write whenever I can. Like last week, so my kids have added jujitsu to the schedule. I don't know why we did this, but we did. And so that's a few nights a week now. And I was sitting in the van writing on my laptop last week. I took some pictures. I was like, this is, this is it. This is how this works. (laughs) So more questions. That was a great question, by the way. I have one. Yay. <laughs> um, so I'm, you know, I'm currently trying to start writing. And I decided with the uh, project that I'm starting, decided to start with figuring out the characters. And I was curious um, how y'all like figure out when you're creating new characters for like a new story and stuff how y'all figure out like who they are um, before you start writing or do you start writing and then figure out their story as you go, like bits and pieces about them? That's another great question. Who wants to take that one first? With um, B Pearl. So I um, started with a scene I was doing um, just writing prompts and it was like, write what scares you. And as a new mom and everything else, like losing a loved one was the scariest thing I could imagine. Um, but at times it got almost too scary where I didn't want to go like that deep in like the thought process and everything. So what I did is I just wrote a scene out. And then after I wrote the scene, I was like, well, who is this girl? Who is she missing? And I, you know, focused a lot on the setting because setting is one of my favorite elements. And let that kind of push the story where it wanted to go, like kind of set the scene on how what the tone of the and the theme of the story was going to be. And then um I'm I really enjoyed like what's the worst that can happen to this character. And um and so that was interesting to see like how far I could push her and how she could use like her character flaws and all this kind of stuff to save the day. And uh, it's funny because I'm actually working on a Girl Scout workshop. And one of the things that we're focusing on is character development. And so I've been, you know, Googling all sorts of things like uh, what's the emotional wounds? Like uh, what's the flaws and how can you turn something that might be like a harmless flaw into something that leads to their downfall? So it goes from like, you know, very um, innocuous type of flaw to the worst kind of flaw that there is. And so it was fun just kind of exploring all that. So I definitely think that um, uh, picking out their flaws and what like makes them tick is a good way to figure out uh, your characters. And it makes them interesting too, because you don't want characters who um, are perfect. If they don't have a, they don't have a character arc if they're perfect. So, um, you know, Give them some of your flaws or give them some of the flaws that you um, see in people that you admire, but they pull it off well. And like, how do they pull off being arrogant, but it works for them type, you know, situations like that. And um, just playing with it is so much fun, I feel like. I think it's my first book. I just kind of started writing and experimenting and getting feedback uh, but now I have some worksheets from a class that I've taken where you kind of write out, so what does your character want? What does he or she fear? Uh, how did the story start? Yeah, like you said, the emotional wound, where did it come from? And how is it affecting him or her? So I now I do fill this out. Even if I have already some ideas in my head, 
kind of as I go through it, I'm like, oh, I hadn't thought, you know, maybe I can go a level deeper. Like there's one level that this person seems like he's so arrogant, so he's so rude to everybody, but maybe that comes from because years ago he lost a girl that he loves and this is how it's affecting him. Maybe he started drinking and drinking is what making him rude and, uh, uh, you know, obnoxious. So you kind of then you get all these levels and then you kind of spread them through the story and he comes out maybe in, in one scene he seems uh, like this terrible guy, then he seems nicer, but then, you know, later you sort of start to seem to, to like him. So I'm not going to use it to kind of make it, try to make it uh, more multidimensional by kind of use, by putting together all these sides of each character. Well, when I approach character, um... I'm a little stilted because I have a bachelor's degree and a master of fine arts degree in theater performing. I was a professional actress. I'm in Screen Actors Guild, SAG-AFTRA. They should be striking. Um, So, you know, whenever I look at that, okay, I'm going to go theater geek on you, theater teacher, for just a moment. Aristotle, back in the day, came up with these elements of the drama. and He said that plot and character are the two most important. You have to have a good plot. You have to have well-rounded characters that, as as Candace and Alina have been saying, they have something that they're fighting for. Um, And so I also ask myself, what happens if they don't get what they want and what happens if they do get what they want, you know? So looking at those ways. And then there is um, a Russian guy who is an acting teacher back um, in the early 1900s, Konstantin Stanislavski. And he used to always talk about the magic if, the what if this, what if that. So when you're creating a character, um, so like the whole basis of my book, A Three Letter Name, was I had gone to Puerto Rico with our church group. We were doing some building efforts after her Maria. Um, it was in 2019. And that friend of mine who has the hearing aid was with me on the plane. And she would joke about how if people were loud, she would turn off her hearing aid and then just sleep on her other good ear. So it would help muffle all the sound. And so as I was literally taking my suitcase and putting in the overhead bin, I thought, what if someone had a skill or an ability or, or, or like a trait that they depended on for their identity and they lost that. So for the main character in my book, she was what they called a listener. These beasts would come in from the forest at night. She'd be up in the trees and she'd literally be listening to hear for them. And she'd sound the alarms if they showed up. Well, what if she lost her hearing and couldn't do that anymore? So she lost a part of who she was as a, as a person. So that's why that's part of the journey. Then she goes through is re-identifying who she is. Um, but yeah, also character secrets. Um, that's something I talk about. I have a whole chapter on this in my uh, From Stage to Page book. Um, one thing we do as actors is um, create a character secret. It doesn't have to be blatant, but it's something you as the author know that that character carries with them. And it could be something that is revealed at a major plot point in your book um, for the reader then to understand your character more and their motivations. But it's something that they hold deep inside, kind of like that emotional wound um, that will help make them make certain choices and and do certain things throughout. Um Ah, character. I love I love building characters. I've done it so much it's a little secondhand, but I just love going down some of those rabbit trails. And I'll even create documents on Word where I'll pull pictures from the internet of who I think my characters look like. And I'll put their physical traits and I'll put their character traits and everything. And part of that's because I've changed like characters' eye color and hair color halfway through a book when I've written before. Um, I, maybe some of you have done that too. I don't know. <laughs> but I always do that as a way to reference back as well. And then it helps me build their character I especially would have multiple characters and keeps them each an individual person. I really don't have much to add. Everyone pretty much covered everything that I would have said. <laughs> Plus some. Okay, a lot. <laughs> That's great. Well, we are actually, we've got seven minutes left. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and share who our winners are. All right, so I'm going to dive into that. Um, first is our final book swag prize pack. Okay, so I have taken, I had a slip of paper here. So I've put all of our readers who are here tonight, I've put your names in here. And I'm going to shake this up and I'm going to draw a name. Let's see what we got. Terry. Okay, so now Terry, I know that you have won this before. So would you like to gift this to someone that you know? 
I think um, if there's a couple of people who haven't won one yet that are here tonight, I think their na- one of their names should be drawn. Okay, that works. All right. Share the fun. <laughs> Share the fun. What about, oh, actually, and I realize I've got Nancy's name in here too. Do you want me to take yours out or do you have a friend in mind that you could gift it to if I happen to draw your name? You can take mine out too since I've won one before. Okay. All right. Well, then let me try this again. Okay. All right. And I'm probably going to say your name wrong, but Jen Doff. I don't know if I'm saying your name right, but you won. So please send me a message with your mailing address and I will get this book swag prize pack in the mail to you. Um, And this actually is very exciting because Alina is adding something in this time. She now has, there you go. The novella is actually in print. So we're going to have that in there as well, along with all the other goodies from our other um, authors this summer. So congratulations. And now it's time to announce our grand prize winners. So we have two grand prize winners. And um, what they win is their choice of either a book by any of our featured authors or authors of the roundtable or a $25 Visa gift card. Okay, so we have two winners first. With the most points for all of her active participation this summer, Terry, you win. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Thank you so much. I've really enjoyed getting to know all of the authors and uh, collecting their books this this summer. <laughs> Yay! That's so exciting. Now, I have to say, technically, Terry also read the most books from our categories, <laughs> but I like to spread the prize love around. So. I looked at the second most books read, and hmm, I predicted it right, y'all. We had another tie. <laughs> so I had we had two names um, who had read the most of the categories, and I put Renee and Rachel on our wheel of names and came up with our second grand prize winner, and that is Rachel. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Well, thank you to everyone who participated in the summer reading fun. And I hope that you had as much fun as I did. Please, please plan to join us next summer and invite your reader friends and check back on my page because I hope to do more things more often throughout the year. Things like this, where we have authors of the roundtable come together um, and be able to answer some questions. And thank you so much to these amazing authors who've given of their time. We've got like three minutes left. So I want each of our authors to share um, where you guys can find them and follow them and uh, what they'd like you to do. (laughs) Maybe let's do um, let's do the same order that we did before. So that would be Alina, Rachel, Candace, Annie, and then I'll close us out. Uh, You can find my books on Amazon. Uh, but uh, this uh, Hearts by the Sea is an is an ebook. You can find it for free. So anywhere you can look up my profile on Amazon and Facebook, Alina Rubin author on Instagram, Alina Rubin author. Find the link to Hearts by the Sea and download this free book. So you can find me um, pretty much on anywhere on social media. Uh, it's Rachel Ritchie, just as you see it spelled here on the screen. Right there. It's a little bit weird on the spelling. It's A E L and then I T C H E Y. It's not weird for me because that's the name I've had all my life. <laughs> but <laughs> it's weird for other people. So it's all good. But it's uh, rachelritchie.com is my website. And then on Instagram, it's also Rachel Ritchie. And my, my face is there. So <laughs> you'll know it's me. <laughs> And uh, my books are available online uh, wherever books are sold. Um, support local indies as much as you can, though. Um, my website's CandaceMarleyConnor.com, and I'm most active on Instagram, and that's Candace underscore Marley Connor. Uh, I, you find me through my website where you can also sign up for my newsletter. I actually have two newsletters. One's for writing tips um, 
from my book coming out. Uh, my website is simply my name, AnnieLizenby.com. Um, I'm also active on many social medias. You can look for me just by Annie Lizenby. I even joined Threads recently just to see what it was all about. Um, I'm active on Facebook and Twitter mostly. You'll see me occasionally on Instagram, but I'm more about talking instead of showing pictures. So I'm not on there much. Uh, but yeah, just Annie Lizenby anywhere you can find it that way. <laughs> And you can find me at joyerankatory.com. And if you add a forward slash links, that is the best place to go because it's going to have whatever is happening um, right then, like our summer reading challenge. That's been top of my links page for all summer. Um, but also you can find on there, there's a little square and it says a free story. Um, it's our good thing. And that is a little taste of my collection of books, my Carolina's Legacy collection. So if you click on that, you can both subscribe to my newsletter. So you'll um, get updates from me once a week. And you'll also get that free download. So that is it. And thank you guys so much for being with us tonight. This has been so much fun. Thank you all. And have a great rest of your summer and happy reading. Thank you, Joy. Thank you. It was yeah. nice meeting you all. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Yeah, have a good Bye. night.